Now, the new school year has just begun for many students of different ages here in South Korea, but for school violence victims, going back might be something they are terrified of. From 2014, more than 10,000 cases of school violence were reported to police each year. And in fact, in 2017, we saw some high-profile cases with gruesome details, you may recall. I mean, this is where bullying goes really extreme. But even just psychological bullying is something that we absolutely have to work harder to stamp out. And so um, we'll be wanting to connect with individual students, with parents and schools to see how we can best prevent school bullying and introduce systemic changes. Graham Salt, headmaster of the Salt branch of Dulwich College in South London, closer to my own home. Uh, and here we both find ourselves in Seoul. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming in. I'm delighted to be here. Thanks for inviting me, Alex. And, I mean, the police have designated March and April as particularly important for school violence intensive care. Uh, can you address for us why the beginning of the school year is so important in that sense? Well, I, th- I think it's a very good idea, uh, this, this notion to um, introduce a period of sensitisation, if you like, for the whole community about the, the you know, devastating effects that bullying can have upon individuals. I wouldn't necessarily say that the start of the year is a a heightened time for bullying, but it's just the best time to change culture, to change your school's culture. Yeah, perhaps Um, the seeds of bullying are planted there. Yes, they are. But I think, you know, our our approach is is we do the same thing. Obviously, we have a different we have a different uh, start of term. We start in August. But the approach is similar in that you, you, you have to sensitise everybody to what this actually is. Uh, and that includes students, it includes all your staff, it includes all your support staff, it includes your parent body. Um, and that, but that is only one half of what needs to be done. And, and this is my slight concern with this approach if it's not tied with uh, another initiative. And that is to... You've got to work really hard to create the open environment in that institution where people can report. You know, so what you're trying to do by sensitising the whole community to the negative effects of bullying and mean behaviour is to create um, many, many more observers, bystanders, everybody who's, um, who can make a difference by reporting negative behaviours. Now, if they're confident that those reports are going to be treated well and professionally and fairly, then then you're on the road to snuffing out bullying much earlier in the process. I mean, I, I think all of us will have been touched by bullying in some way in our lives, whether that's directly or witnessing a child. I mean, in some ways, it's harder seeing a child go through it because as a parent, you can feel absolutely uh, Mm. powerless. Mm. And, and, you know, I've had the experience myself of of Mm. speaking to teachers and, and head teachers here in Korea. And even with the best will in the world, the problem is sometimes the bullies don't want to listen or they don't care. And, and, of course, the bullies can be victims of something else that's going on in their lives. It's a hugely complex issue, isn't it, to, it, to take care of? It is. It is. Um, we're, we're, we're educators, you know, and I think we can change people. You know, I don't think we can change everybody. But in many cases, uh, bullies... Um, well, firstly, bullies... Sh- if you have the right systems in place, bullies are not allowed to get too far down the road with a particular victim. Yeah, if I say with the sensitization and an open environment, you can you can get to this early and then you've got a chance to work with that particular person to to approach some rehabilitation. We are educators. We have to believe that we can change people, change young people for the better. Mm. You know, otherwise we're in the wrong job. So we give them a go. Maybe we need to try to define what bullying is. And I don't want yes. to put you on the spot with no. that, but but yeah. no. there's with young people, it's, there's always going to be some natural comments yeah. backwards and forwards some interaction I, you know it's, with my own six year old son I, you know he's unbelievably sensitive yeah. when I say something that he's offended by yeah. you know th- does that make me a bully then you know as the father no, probably no, not but but where do you draw the line in the no, school I mean it, it's a really really good question it's, it's very important for people to understand what that definition is because um, because it's a very emotive term 
and it is bandied about. And for us, it's a very, very clear definition. Now, people do mean things. You know, young people do mean things because they're young and they make mistakes and they're finding their way in the world. They don't really understand the world around them yet. They're not emotionally mature enough to manage all the different complexities of relationships and decision making. So they do mean things from time to time. But that's not bullying. That's a, that's a mean act, an unkind act, which again needs to be addressed, of course, by any good institution school. But bullying is the systematic, long-term targeting of an individual in the clear knowledge that you're hurting somebody. That's bullying. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Why do you think, though, the data suggests it's getting worse here in South Korea? Is, is, is it perhaps because of better data gathering? I do think that. I think that's, I think that's actually part of the story there, that um, we are getting better at reporting. There has been increased sensitization through media stories and by you know, interviews like this and, and, uh, uh, and other information from government into schools, recognising that this is a serious issue. And so, you know, in some ways, that's part of a good news story, <laughs> that there is more reporting. But I do think there are some other complexities here, aren't there? There's the, 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 the access to social media does mean it's easier uh, to make an immediate and unkind communication to a targeted individual or group. Um, that certainly is, is, is part of this particular story. And, but, and you it know, allows, it leaves a trail. And it allows bullying... Well, it does leave yeah, a trail, yeah. that's true. But it, it allows bullying to become a little bit more anonymous. Like, people are braver mm-hmm. behind a screen, aren't they? They are. And, and unfortunately, they could be then more unkind. And, and yeah, that... yeah, absolutely. But again, it, it does leave a trail. It leaves evidence. It's very hard to communicate even over social media and not be able to find out who is communicating with you, especially yeah. when it's within an, an institution. So kids have to feel emboldened to come forward and show that trail. Uh, absolutely. Or their friends do. You know, mm. this is another thing. It's, it's others will know that a, ch- that a child is being targeted. Others will know. Now, if you can embolden them to report you know you've, you've you've spread the net much wider i think even at preschool level though you can see um trends of bullying starting it's not quite bullying at like you know middle or high school level but you can start to see behaviors which could develop into bullying if left unchecked and sometimes when i see that i think to myself gosh what kind of unhappy conditions does that boy or girl have to deal with mm. if they're carrying that kind of bitterness to their preschool environment with them. Then again, maybe it's just something natural. It doesn't have to be a troubled home. But hmm. but the reason I mention this is that our happiness index is notoriously poor. 20th out of 22 nations in 2016, according to research carried out by the uh, Bang Jung Hwan Foundation uh, and Yonsei hmm. University Institute hmm. for Social Development Studies, hmm. with the suicide rate being relatively high here as well. That, hmm. So that seems to be something going on there that we need to address. It's, it's really important research, isn't it? I mean, I think uh, the data has been produced in Korea by respected and established academic researchers. So we have to take note from this. It's not something that's come, it's coming from, the out, uh, from outside Korea. This has come from within Korea, and we need to take note. I think, I mean, bullying um, would play a part to this to some extent, but I have to say, I don't think it's the full story. You know, I, I think there are other elements at, at, uh, at play here that for some students in Korea provides a kind of perfect storm for them to be unhappy and to be put into the depths of despair. Um, I, I think one of those is that there is a huge amount of pressure on young people. And part of that is because, in my opinion, quite unimaginative expectations and pathways provided for them by their parents for the future. You know, they're very conventional, they're highly aspirational, they're quite limited. There's, there's always a plan A, absolutely. For, you know, parents invest huge amounts in education in this country. There is a plan A f- for all their children, but there's rarely a plan B. Mm. And plan A is often going to be unattainable. Mm. And plan B is only contemplated when plan A has been missed and the child's labelled a failure. And I, I, we are really pushing for parents to be more and more engaged with the process of, of directing the future of their children to, to a range of possible post-school studies and employment. Just open up, just open up your mind 
to think about some other possibilities. And, and, they, I, and they are there. They're here at public uh, school level are. as well. It doesn't have uh, to be something you throw a lot of money at. Absolutely. I, I, I totally agree with that. And I think, you know, the, the, the more you contemplate that and think about it from a personal perspective for your child, you know, really think deeply about this. It takes a lot of investment in time and thought. Uh, but use your school counsellors uh, to help find some options for your child, which are very, very good plan, plan Bs. And I reckon, you know, once you've been through that process, you'll realise that Plan B is often better than Plan A. We are so short of time, and this is such yeah. a big topic. Mm-hmm. But there is a hotline for reporting school violence. We should make that clear. 117. Uh, it's free of charge. Do you have a final message that you'd like to send to parents, to, to kids who may be victims, or to bullies yeah. themselves? Yes, I think this is, this is easy to say to a parent who's just discovered that their child has been a victim of bullying. But my first advice is please stay calm and communicate with your school. You know, I, I think things go out of control when parents try to take matters into their own hands too quickly. Things are not always black and white. There's often a bigger story at hand here. And there are approaches that can be taken to close down the problem, which is not helped by those two particular actions. Understand. So I think a calm, you know, try to say calm, and please put your faith in the school to try and deal with this. Uh, and for us to, um, for, for a school to um, investigate, do have a due process, and then um, to deal with, this, with the situation. That's how we would deal with it in yeah. school. But I, th- I think also, if possible, one thing I've seen relatively little of is the kind of the rehabilitation of relationships. You know, we, we, we will all have difficult relationships in our lives. And I think we've got an example to show in schools that we can fall out with people. People can do bad things, but we can still live together. We can still work together. Yeah, can at least still coexist, be, we right? Can, yeah, and we, we can still be friends together as well. And to victims, just like victims of not meeting plan A, you are not a failure. Uh, it's not necessarily... No. Uh, ...about you. It could be about the, the bully. Graham yeah, Salt, yeah. headmaster of the Salt Branch of Dulwich College in South London, thank you so much. Great to have you here. Thanks, Alex.